Hello and welcome to a tutorial on realistic animation using Adobe Flash. Today we'll be making our very own animation like the one you see here. Let's get started. Unfortunately I don't own the rights to the video which I animated that one from so for everybody's enjoyment I have made my own dancing video in front of my Christmas tree and presents. As you can see I'm very very happy in my PJs jamming out in front of my Christmas tree. I also have a Another video, if you don't want to choose that one, of a, a Swedish dude juggling a soccer ball. You can choose whichever one you like. It will both work in this demonstration. I provided you with the scenes extracted from the video file. Uh, there's about 15 frames in the dancing video. I'm going to show you how to do that yourself using a program called Virtual Dub. I provided the link to the download below. And what Virtual Dub is uh, going to allow you to do is to select however many frames you want from the video and save them as individual JPEG files so that you can have each frame to do whatever you want with. This will be particularly useful in Flash where we can put the image behind and draw on top of it so that we can have our animation look exactly like the one in any video that you like. Click File, Open Video File and select between Party Time or Swedish Kicks. Oh, we all know that you chose party time. You can scroll through the video and uh, we'll find a, a point where the video will loop easily. So what that means is that we want it to have a frame with its last frame and, our, and its first frame as identical as possible. Now you just use the uh, button I just clicked there to have the end point and the button to the left of that for the beginning point. You click edit and crop to selection. We're not going to need every frame of the video, that'd be too many, so we're going to select every couple frames. You go up to video and the uh, frame rate. Now I'm going to be selecting process every third frame, but for the purpose of this demonstration, you should click the decimate by option and uh, make it six or so so that you don't have to animate as many frames. And once again, I've provided these frames in the zip file, but uh, it's useful to know how to do this yourself. So we're going to make a new folder to contain the images from each frame. I'm going to call it Dance Frames. And then we're going to head back to Virtual Dub, and we're going to export these frames to the folder. So we'll click on Export, Image Sequence. You're going to want to make it a, a JPEG, so click JPEG, and save it to the dance frames folder we just made and uh, name it whatever you like it's just going to number the sequence for however many frames there are so if we look back in the dance frames folder we should see all of the frames in order and if we click on it and scroll through them you can see there we have it we have a dancing idiot <laughs> nonetheless this is a pretty useful way to get any kind of sample you like is just to videotape yourself doing it. Now that's all out of the way and we have all of our frames for our animation we're going to make a new flash file. I like to have it 640 by 480 under the document properties. We'll have frame rate as 24 still. I'm not sure if I'm going to change that. So then we're going to click file, import, import to library. We're going to go to the dance frames folder. We're going to select all of the frames that we just captured in virtual dub. And click open. You can then see all of our frames numbered in the library. This is the, uh, the tedious part is we're going to convert however many frames we have. We're going to go to the timeline there. We're going to convert all those to keyframes. We're then going to select the frames one by one and just drag them in starting with zero. So zero, one, two, three, and uh, an important keyboard shortcut here is that you can see up there I'm changing the frame is uh, you just press the, the period button so that you can change the frame before you put in the new image. Now starting with the first frame we're going to change the x and y coordinates to zero and make the width and height about half their size so 250 and 450 for the height. We're going to then go to the next frame, click the period button, and we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to click the image, and then change the x and y coordinate to zero, and uh, half the height 
and the width so that we can fit it in frame. If anybody knows a faster way of doing this, let me hear about it in the comments because I do not particularly like doing this every time, but it, I have yet to find a faster way. So once you've relocated and resized all your images so that they match each other, scroll through and see if it all matches up. Seems to be looking just as ridiculous as it did before. Now to center all the images to wherever you want to put them, you'll click on edit multiple frames and then select all of the frames and then just do the same thing but move it wherever you want. I'm going to move it to 200 and let's say 20 so that it's, yeah, it looks about in the middle so we can start animating over top of it. I'll hit control enter so we can test our movie and see if it is looping the way we want it to. Alright. So what we're going to do is add in two layers, one for the head and one for the body. And these layers need to be above the video layer so that they're on top of it. We're then going to lock the video layer so that we can't draw on it. And we're going to lock the body layer so we can't draw on it. And we're going to start with the head. Now the head is much easier, so we're going to take care of it first and then we're going to get to the body afterwards. I'll click the pencil and uh, select, a, select a color that's very bright so we can see it over top of the video. And uh, select no fill for the, the fill so we can see through the circle. Select the first frame in the head layer and draw a circle over top of the head the best you can. I'm going to select the circle and go over to stroke and change it to 4 so that it's a, a thicker circle. Click on F6 to make a new keyframe in the head layer. Then we'll press Q to use the free transform tool so we can rotate and shift around the head wherever we like. Make, a, make another keyframe and uh, just keep following the head around until you reach the last frame. And uh, rotate it and shift it to match it exactly. When it's all done, it should look like something like this. The head's just moving around with my head. We're then going to lock the head layer and unlock the body layer and start working on the body. We're then going to use the line tool to drag from his neck down to his waistline where his belt would be, down to his knee, down to his ankle, and then out to his toes. Repeat the same for the other leg. For the arms, we're going to start at the chest, go to the shoulder, the elbow, and then the wrist. And we'll repeat that with the other one. Make sure you start at the chest, go to the shoulder, down to the elbow, and up to the wrist. Now when drawing the body, it's best to click F7 and make a blank keyframe so that we can start all over again because the motion changes so much. And just go through the, the same procedure each frame going from the, the waist to the knee to the ankle to the toes and from the chest to the shoulder to the elbow to the wrist. Once you've done this for all the frames, we'll click Control Enter and voila, we have a happy dancing green guy. We no longer need the video layer, we're done with it, so we just right click and delete the layer. And for the black background, we just uh, Go to the document properties, click on stage, and change it to black. Then go ahead and add in some celebratory text. Click Control Enter, and we have our video. All you need to do is add some music, and you just made gold. <laughs> Now to export your masterpiece to a GIF file, we're going to go to Publish Settings, select GIF Image. You can deselect the HTML wrapper. Oh, we don't need that. Um, go back to the GIF Image settings, and we're going to make sure that the playback isn't static. We're going to make sure that it's animated.
but I'm going to select where it's going to be published and what it's going to be called after it's published. Now that we have our published settings, we're going to click File, Publish, and uh, check the desktop. The file should be there. Thanks for watching.